Hey everyone, it's me again, and it's finally here! The Battle of the Matte Eyeshadows video that I've been promising you guys for quite literally months. Normally, this would be the kind of video that I would wear makeup for. Uh, so why am I not wearing makeup, you ask? Well, just in time for my big trip home coming up in a few days, I got a cold! So, <laughs> I am a little bit sick. Because I do use my makeup and my brushes on clients as well as myself, whenever I get sick, I don't touch my makeup at all because I don't want it to get contaminated. All of that aside, matte eyeshadows. Let's talk about matte eyeshadows. So matte eyeshadows were a big, big trend. Kind of in the late summer, they started to really gain popularity, and especially with the resurgence of the matte liquid lipstick craze that's going on right now. It is all about matte, 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 and matte eyes are no exception. By and large, I mean, matte eyeshadows are just a staple, and if there's one thing that, you know, future makeup enthusiasts need to have, whether it's in their personal collection or in their kit for freelancing or professional work, it is matte eyeshadows. A good matte eyeshadow can do wonders for your kit. Crucial for definition and crease work, they can be used in eyebrows and contouring, they're versatile and they're absolutely necessary and it's important to have good ones. Which brings me to this video. A lot of brands came out with specifically marketed matte eyeshadow palettes. So, so long story short, I'm gonna give you guys, in my opinion, what the best matte eyeshadow palette is on the market, bar none. Without further ado, after that long ass intro, let's go ahead and actually get into this video. I have a whole bunch of notes to go over. So we're just gonna introduce the rules I set for myself for this kind of comparison video and the categories that I am rating by and finally the palettes that I'm going to be going through with you today. So the rules, first rule, the palette must be $50 or less, hence why Vizart's not in here. I set that rule mostly because, you know, yeah, I could sit here and review a Vizart palette, but realistically, you know, that's not going to be in a lot of people's budget. So I tried to keep it at least to kind of the middle high range as being the most expensive that I would go, just so, you know, it stays accessible for just about anyone. Must be specifically marketed as a matte palettes. You know, yes, the Lorac Pro palettes have matte shadows in them, but they're not specifically marketed as an all matte eyeshadow palette. I wanted to keep this specifically to palettes that either have matte in the name or are marketed as matte eyeshadow palettes. Well, shadows must be matte, no shimmer. So no shimmers in any of these palettes at all. Uh, must be released in the last year and still available. I wanted a good variety of sizes and price points from all different brands, so I've got drugs drugstore, high-end, all kinds of different stuff, and the palettes must be purchased by me. Nothing can be sponsored. The judgment parameters. I checked for pigmentation, whether they are sheer, mild, extreme, moderate, what the pigmentation is like, texture. Is it powdery, flaky, dry, smooth, hard, soft, creamy, what have you. Blendability. Easy, moderate, or difficult. Uh, color variety, wide, moderate, or narrow. Uh, value slash cost effectiveness. So I took each product's cost and found out the unit price and figured out which shadows are the best value for the money. And then finally, portability and packaging. Now that wasn't a, a very big kind of parameter for me, but I thought I'd include it just because, you know, people travel with these palettes, so it's important for them to have durable packaging. So let's go ahead and introduce the palettes. I have six matte eyeshadow palettes to show you guys. First is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette. There's the Tarte Tartlet matte shadow palette, the first one, because I know the In Bloom one just came out, but this is the first one. The Lorac Pro Matte palette, so the specifically matte one. The Balms Meet Matte Nude, and I think this breaks the one year rule, but I'm not sure when it came out. Then the Too Faced Natural Matte eyeshadow palette. Finally, my drugstore the e.l.f. Mad for Matte eyeshadow palette. I picked these candidates a few months ago, so there might have been palettes that have been released since then. I haven't gotten my hands on those, so I'm just going with what I have here. Let's go ahead and get started with the Kat Von D Shade and Light eye palette. 
That is what it looks like. This is available. It is a Sephora exclusive, so it's only available at Sephora stores or on Sephora.com. The cost is $46. You get 12 eyeshadows. Three of them are 2.3 grams and nine of them are 1.1 grams of product. So your total unit price for that is approximately $2.74 per gram and all of this is in USD. The color scheme is neutral. You've got three quads here, one neutral quad, one cool quad, and one warm quad. Let's talk about the packaging. The packaging is beautiful. Really, really high marks for Kat Von D on packaging. I mean, this is just gorgeous to look at. It's got a kind of raised texture to it. It's got a magnet that's decently strong, but doesn't pass the shake test. Basically, when palettes have magnets like this, I do what's called a shake test, which means I will hold the palette up by its upper level, so by this level right here, and I'll lightly shake it, and if it pops open, it fails the shake test. It means the magnet is too weak, and there is a chance that it could come open in your suitcase or your makeup bag or whatever. So it's got a very intuitive layout. That's another, another plus for me, another pro of this palette. It's got a very intuitive layout, so matte eyeshadows can be a little bit intimidating for the makeup beginner, but this divides this into quads, so it gives you a place to start from. And it's very easy to kind of move from quad to quad or blend the two as you go along, but for, you know, for the first time user, if I'm just getting into makeup and I dig into this, I know right away, you know, okay, these colors will go well together, these colors will go well together, and these colors will go well together. Uh, the names of the shadows are on the back of the packaging. This is more of a plus for YouTubers than for anything else, but I like the fact that the names are printed on the back and not on a plastic sheet. There is no annoying plastic sheet. Love that. And you get a decent variety. This is going to be a palette that you could very easily use on its own, or you could combine it with other palettes and, you know, have these standard matte shades. And that's kind of what I liked about the variety on this one, is that you get a wide variety, but these are really standard shades that are going to be universal no matter what eye looks you're trying to create. You know, these are things that you know, you should really have in your kit regardless. This isn't terribly travel friendly because of the weak magnet and it's a little big. It's a little bulky, not too bad, but you know, if you're just carrying one of those little tiny makeup bags, this isn't something that's gonna fit in one of those. Um, it's not very useful for people of color, which was another parameter that I set for these palettes because, you know, there's a lot of kind of there's a lot of palettes out there that are really good for pasty white people. So I'm looking at these from the perspective of somebody who is not only a performer, but a professional freelance makeup artist. So I need to know that I'm gonna be able to travel with this and that I'm gonna be able to use it on all different kinds of skin tones. And this, I mean, when you look at the palette itself, the cool row is not going to be very useful for women of color. It's going to make them look ashy a little bit. The neutral row, again, not very useful. The warm quad will go great with women of color, but you know, are you really going to pay $46 for only one quad worth of eyeshadow? This is a fantastic palette from an eyeshadow quality standpoint. The texture is smooth, it's not too powdery, there's very little fallout involved with these. They're pigmented, they're easy, easy, easy to blend. I, I mean, for matte eyeshadows, normally matte eyeshadows are not easy to blend at all. These are very, very easy to blend. They're pigmented, but not too pigmented. I like it when it's pigmented, but I also like it when it's more buildable, so it doesn't have to be super, super pigmented as long as I can build it up, because if it's a little less pigmented, I feel like I have more control when it comes to blending. Here's my rundown of the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette. Moving right along to the Tarte Tartlet Matte Palette. So this is available at both Sephora and Ulta, which is a plus. It's a lot more widely available, so my Ulta ladies can get their hands on this too. The cost is $44. You get 12 eyeshadows, and each of the eyeshadows is 1.5 grams of product. So the unit price on that is approximately $2.44 per gram. The color scheme is neutral with just a pop of plummy purple in the center row here and you get three rows. One of them is neutral, one of them is plum, and the other one is cool toned. So let's get into the packaging and the layout. 
Pluses for the packaging. It's got a very slim, thin design, which I like a lot because it makes it very travel friendly. It is made of plastic with a sturdy front clasp. It took me, at first, when I first got this, it was actually hard to open, but as you open it and close it, it gets a little bit easier. But when it clicks into place, it feels sturdy, which I so prefer to magnets because it's not gonna pop open in your makeup bag. The names on the palette are printed underneath each pan of eyeshadow. You can't even really see them because the palette is super metallic, but um, you can kind of see the names there. They're printed underneath the shadow, which again, I prefer. It's got a huge mirror, very, very big mirror, and it sits up on its own, so it's very practical for use when traveling, and it's a decent value for the price, all things considered. Now the cons on packaging. This was tough to open when I first got it, but of course it's improved since then. It did have an annoying plastic sheet. I hate those plastic sheets because I feel like I have to keep them in the palette, otherwise the eyeshadow will get messed up somehow, but they're so annoying. The gold metallic interior of this palette, see this shiny stuff? It makes it a little bit tough to judge the color in the pan. So it makes it a little tough at first glance to try and form looks with this. Another con. It is even less friendly to people of color than the Kat Von D palette was. This has almost nothing that is usable by people of color. And I've noticed that's a little bit of a pattern with Tarte. Um, they have a few palettes that have a few shades that'll be people of color friendly, but most of them are for pasty white folks. So that's definitely the case with this palette. There's hardly anything usable here for women of color. And there are no warm shades. There is like maybe one. This Force of Nature shade is kind of a warm color, but you know, that's, I feel like that's something that's really missing in this palette. This is very cool toned and there's the one row that's neutral, but the rest of it is extremely cool toned. And so it kind of, you know, docks it points on versatility a small bit. Eyeshadow quality, moderate pigmentation, decent if you ask me. Uh, it's got a smooth, soft texture for most of the shadows, although the darker shades in this palette, all three of them really, these three shades back here are a little on the dry side, and I'll go into that a little more in a second. The mid-tone shades are very blendable, the highlight shades are very blendable. The downsides here, it kicks up some powder when you dip your brush in here. You have to be really careful and tap off your brush, otherwise you're gonna get some fallout. Um, the lighter shades can lack pigmentation compared to the mid-tone shades. This might be tougher for beginners to use, because the darker shades are dry and tough to blend, at least from my experience. That is the rundown of the Tarte Tartlet Matte Palette. Too Faced Natural Matte Eyeshadow Palette. Now initially I wasn't even going to include this in this video, but you know, I promised myself that I was gonna do a variation of all kinds of shapes and sizes of palettes, and even though this is quite small, it does perform very well. Um, let's talk about the low down with the throw down. This is available on Sephora, Ulta, and Too Faced's website. So three different spots, super plus for that. The cost is $36. Another bonus, it's also available at some military exchange stores. So all my military folk and military wives can get their hands on this as well. Cost is $36, you get nine eyeshadows. Three of them are two grams even, and the other six over here are 0.9 grams. So not quite a gram there. Their scheme is neutral. The unit price is $3.15 per gram. So little bit on the pricier side from a value standpoint. You've got three rows here divided into day, classic, and fashion. Um, mostly neutral, then pink, then warm. So you have the neutral row here, the pinky toned row here, and the warmer row down here. So let's go ahead and go through the packaging first. The packaging is very visually appealing. It is beautiful. It's got this nice little print here on the side. It's metal, it's raised. So very, very visually appealing, very nice to look at. There's no annoying plastic sheet, huge plus for me. Um, the shadow names are printed on the packaging. They have fun names. It's not just like, you know, brown or gray. It's 
cashmere bunny and sexpresso and strapless, you know, like all these kind of risque uh, sort of names. Uh, the highlight and transition shades in this are much larger than the smaller shades, so you have more product there to use. The downside. The pans that are not the highlight and transition shades over here are extremely small. Like, I can barely get an eyeshadow brush in those things. Um, I still can, but they're extremely small. You're not getting a whole lot of product in those. And the magnet did, in fact, fail the shake test, so you're gonna have to seal this up somehow, not gonna pass the shake test or get it a stronger magnet. Uh, there's no mirror in this, which could be a downside if you're planning on traveling with it, which with a small palette like this, I would really expect it to be more travel friendly. The variety in here is sorely lacking. I mean, there are literally only nine shadows in this and they're mostly neutral shades, not a whole lot of variety here. And again, not very friendly for people of color to use. That being said, this does have a soft, creamy eyeshadow texture. Beautiful texture on these, very pigmented, very blendable. Um, it might even be too soft for some, I will say. Uh, if you're a beginner or if you're kind of a beast with your eyeshadow, you know, you like to dig your brush in there, that's not going to work with these. They're going to fall apart on you. You're going to get a lot of fallout and stuff like that. These, when it comes to blending, can get muddy if you're not really careful. So, a little something to keep in mind for the Too Faced Natural Matte Palette. The Lorac Pro Matte Eyeshadow Palette. This was released alongside a second palette, that is the Pro Metal Eyeshadow Palette. Um, that's all metallic shades, this is all matte shades. The rundown here is that this is an Ulta exclusive, as most, pretty much all Lorac products are. This is $28, you get eight shades, each shade is 0.5 grams of product, totaling four grams altogether, and the unit price is about $3.50 per gram, so a little pricey again. Uh, the theme with, is neutral with a pop of kind of pink mauve and burgundy in here. Packaging is your basic standard Lorac Pro packaging. It is cardboard, which eh, I'm not a huge fan of cardboard, but we all know that already. Um, this does have a magnet, but I mean, I guess it'll pass the shake test for the most part. Um, it's fairly strong, definitely stronger than the other two magnets we've looked at so far. It's very slim and sleek, very travel friendly, nice and small, so you can fit it in one of those little teeny tiny makeup bags. It is people of color friendly for the most part. So people of color, my beautiful, beautiful chocolate princesses, this is the first palette I found that's actually mostly people of color friendly. You guys are gonna be able to use this burgundy and this black and even this pink mauve shade and even some of these neutral shades down here. There's only a few shades here that would look not so great on you. So definitely a people of color friendly palette. Huge, huge plus. The variety on this one, not the best. Um, you're only getting eight shades and most of them are neutrals that you could probably find in a million other palettes that you already own. Um, the only real thing that kind of increases the appeal of this palette for me is the portability of it. Uh, it has the annoying plastic sheet, which eh, is more annoying than anything else. Uh, the velvety finish of these palettes can get dirty really easily, and it's only at Ulta. So any international folks, Ulta doesn't really ship internationally too well, so you're not going to be able to get your hands on this too easily. Eyeshadow quality. You guys know I love Lorac's eyeshadows. They're the best eyeshadow formula on the planet, in my opinion. They're absolutely stunning, and these are no exception. They're the standard pro formula. They're the same kind of formula you will find in the Lorac Pro and Pro 2 palettes. Um, soft, creamy texture, ultra pigmented, very blendable, even with the darker shades. So definitely gets points with that. This can be a little bit intense for beginners, um, a little tough to work with for people who are heavy handed with product, and it can create a bit of fallout if you're not careful. So that's the lowdown with the showdown on the Lorac Pro Matte Palette. Again, as is common with these small palettes, I find myself bored. Last high-end palette is the Balm's Meet Matte Nude. 
This is available at Kohl's stores online and in military exchange stores in some places. You have to go to the right exchange stores to find the balm. It is $42 retail. You get nine eyeshadows here for a total of 25.5 grams of product. So each eyeshadow is 2.83 grams, which is pretty big compared to some of the other palettes we've seen. The color scheme is generally neutral with a kind of grayer, more cooler toned lean to it. And your unit price is $1.65 per gram. So great, amazing value coming from this. Packaging layout. The pans are huge. That is one, that's one of my main notes on the pro side for this palette. The pans are gigantic. So chances are good you're not gonna run out of this too quickly. It's a very, very good value at $1.65 per gram. Uh, it's a very effective companion palette. So this is the kind of thing that I would use in conjunction with other shimmery shadows or metallic shadows to create um, looks that have a more matte grounding to them. Very, very good for that. Uh, thin packaging. It's a cardboard packaging that's very thin and sleek. There is a magnet and it's decently strong. I don't have in my notes here, well, it's, I mean, it's strong-ish. For how big the palette is, it is a little on the weak side, but it passes a mild shake test, so probably pretty travel friendly. A lot of the shades in here are decently people of color friendly. My women of color might have trouble with these two shades right here being a little too cool toned, but most of the rest of these are at the very least usable. I don't know how, you know, how much of a must have this would be for women of color, but it is usable. So if you have it, you can definitely use most of these shades. My main downsides is the magnets a little bit on the weak side. There are only nine pans, so from a variety standpoint, you're not getting a whole lot of differing colors. Um, there are no flesh tone shades, at least not for me. Um, so I have no blending shades in here except for a white, which can be a little bit stark if you try to blend with it. Um, women of color do have these three, however. That would probably work very well. There's no black in here, which honestly doesn't really bother me that much, but it's something I thought I would mention. Uh, the mirror is big, but not exactly usable on its own. You would definitely need to set it up against something. Uh, another downside to cardboard packaging. Mostly browns and grays, so a little bit on the boring side. But the eyeshadows are nicely pigmented and decently blendable. Uh, pretty easy to work with all the way around. But the darker shades may be a little bit too pigmented for beginners, maybe a little tough for beginners to blend. Basically all the way around this is a decent companion palette and I mostly like it for its value. It's extremely good value for how much product you're getting. My one drugstore matte eyeshadow palette option, which is the e.l.f. Mad for Matte eyeshadow palette. Let me give you the rundown. This is available on e.l.f.'s website. I think it might be available in some stores. I'm not sure. It might just be online only, but I can't say for sure because I don't live in America. The cost is $10. It is the cheapest out of any of the eyeshadow palettes I have here. You get 10 shades, but <laughs> I couldn't find the gram amount on this product, so I could not determine the unit price or exactly how many grams of product you're getting, which is kind of a downside for me because I can't tell you whether this is a decent value or not. Packaging is plastic with a mirror that stands on its own, but it's kind of skinny. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to really use that. It has a clasp closure, very, very sturdy. This has the sturdiest packaging of any of the palettes I have here, which is surprising considering it's the most affordable. Eyeshadow quality. <sighs> you know, I'm in a love-hate relationship with this palette. When I first started using it, I was really, really impressed with the colors I was using. There are definitely some huge winners here um, when it comes to pigmentation and blendability and workability. These mid-tone shades are gorgeous. This taupe shade in the brows, awesome. Uh, let's see. You know, the, the highlight shades, this flesh tone shade is pretty great considering the price. However, the black and the gray down here, atrocious. The pigmentation, like here, let me dig into this gray here real quick. The pigmentation is just not there. I mean, it'll look good on the, on the finger, but then when I swatch it out, see that? It's just, just there's nothing to it. 
It's very, very sheer. The black is the same way. The darker shades, with the exception of this plum, are extremely sheer. And this plum doesn't look plum on the eyes. It just looks like a dark brown or a black. So it's kind of like, what's the point of having it in there to begin with? These can go muddy extremely quickly. The texture is a touch dry. It's not bad considering it's drugstore, but it is a little bit dry, so it's gonna be a little bit tougher to blend the darker shades, which are kind of garbage to begin with, honestly. It can be a little patchy as well. So all in all, I mean, it's okay if it's really like the only thing you can afford. You're getting some decent shades with this, but know that you're also going to be getting quite a few duds in here. You get what you pay for is basically what I'm saying. So let's go ahead and do the final lowdown. My awards. So I kind of, you know, gave each of these palettes different awards because each of them have their, their benefits and their drawbacks depending on what you're looking at. My first award is for the Looker. Basically, the Looker award goes to the eyeshadow palette with the best packaging. And that, without a doubt for me, was the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette. It is beautiful to look at. And even the layout of the shadows is just stunning. So that gets the Looker award. And the next up is the best pop. So a lot of these matte eyeshadow palettes will be mostly neutral with a pop of color. For me, the best pop of color is in the Lorac Pro Matte Palette, and it is the pop of burgundy here in this row right there. Gorgeous shade, beautiful to work with. Next award is Best Variety. So I gave this award not necessarily to, you know, this wasn't necessarily intended to go to the palette with the most shades in it, but it's meant to go to the palette with the best variety. So basically, how many different looks can I create just using one palette? And for that, the award again goes to Kat Von D. Even though this has the most shades in it also, it's just, I can create hundreds of different looks with these different shadows just on their own. Whereas a lot of the other palettes were quite frankly, you know, a lot of the shades started looking the same on the eyes and I could only really create maybe a handful of looks with each of them. Best companion palette. So best palette to be used in conjunction with other eyeshadows in your collection. That, re that little award goes to the Balms Meet Matte Nude Palette. Gorgeous companion palette. Great shades here that are based that can be used with all kinds of different shadows. The best shade names, and this is just kind of a fun award, you know, this will go to the palette that has the funniest or most creative or inspiring shade names, and that goes to the Tarte Tartlet palette. With names like Caregiver and Power Player and Super Mom, I mean, how could I not give that award to that palette? Such interesting names there. Close runner up to that is the Too Faced Natural Matte palette, though, I mean, Sexpresso, like, come on. I decided to create an award for the best beginner palette. And for me, the best beginner palette is the Tarte Natural Matte palette. So the Tarte Natural Matte palette got my best beginner award just because it's, it's got a, a little bit of a variety, but not so much that it's intimidating, and it's pretty intuitive, and it's small enough that a beginner is not going to be completely overwhelmed, and the quality is decently easy to work with. So that gets my best beginner award. The most inspiring slash pro pick award goes out to the palette that I would recommend highest for professional makeup artists. And you guessed it, that palette is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette. I mean, it's just on variety alone and on size alone, this is beautiful for professionals, amazing to work with. Most travel friendly. The most travel friendly I described as a palette that is not just thin and sleek, but also sturdy and is not going to come apart. That goes to the Tarte Tartlet Matte Palette. Super thin, super sleek, and it clasps shut, so it's going to keep your product safe. Best shadow quality. The best shadow quality was kind of a toss up, but I ended up picking Lorac just because Lorac has the best shadow quality of any I've ever seen. It's pigmented, it's blendable, it's soft, it's smooth, it's beautiful. I love it, you guys already know that. We come down to it, the runner up and the winner of my eyeshadow palette showdown. The runner up, the second best palette I ran into based on all of the rating categories is the Tarte Tartlet Matte Palette. 
The main thing that set this one back is variety. There's no variety in here and it's not very friendly for women of color. So that was the main reason it got the runner up. Uh, that being said, most of the shadows are very, very decently pigmented, blendable. The dark shades are a little bit weak in the blendability side, but all in all, it is a pretty nice matte palette if the shades complement your skin tone. This will become a surprise to absolutely no one if you've been paying attention for the last 41 minutes. First of all, if you've been here through this entire video, kudos to you. You've literally watched the sunset with me. <laughs> the winner, my pick for the best matte eyeshadow palette ever of 2015, my main recommendation if you're going to get something and you want it to be the best overall, the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette, man. When I first saw this, I was skeptical. Being really hyped on YouTube, so it's probably not as good as they're claiming. No, it is every bit as good as they're claiming. If you're looking for one eyeshadow palette that has all mattes, that will be the only matte eyeshadow palette you will ever need in your life, I gotta pick this one. I mean, even over Lorac. Like, it wins on variety, it wins on value, it wins on, you know, packaging and eyeshadow quality. It's just a stunning palette. It's beautiful to work with. Yes, it's expensive. At $46, it just barely made the threshold for my $50 rule, but this is a palette you're gonna be using a lot in your daily makeup routine. And it's something that you can combine with other eyeshadows in your collection. It's something that can be used all different kinds of ways. It's gorgeous to work with, it's gorgeous to look at, and I absolutely love it. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for sitting all the way through this entire video. If you have, um, you get a gold star from me because I know it's a long one, but I had a lot of information to go through here. And I hope you found this informative. I hope it helped you major make your decision on the best matte eyeshadow palette for you. If you did find this informative or helpful or you just plum liked it, there's a button for that. Spank that like button in the butt. You know it deserves it. And if you want to see more from me, subscribe and become a member of the faithful today. I upload videos every Sunday. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and I will see you in the next video. Toodles!